Welcome into Sports Moments Betting Podcast for Wednesday, July 24th. We got Nick Borman on. We're talking MLS every game on the board for this weekend slate. Also, some golf at the top. So, Nick, welcome to the pod. How are you doing today? Hey, Drew. I'm doing great, man. How are you? I'm doing good, and hats off to you. I give you a big thanks. Made some money uh, off of our podcast last week, talking about the British Open, the Open this past week, and uh, I bet Brooks Kepka, uh top five, top ten, and over Roy McIlroy, looking to fade McIlroy, you know, coming back home, a lot of pressure on him. All three hit, plus money, so uh, thanks to you and pointing me in that direction. What? I, 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 also, another one, uh, missing the cut, we, we were talking about on last podcast, so I'm, I'm guessing you did really well over the weekend as well. Yeah, it was a, a very solid week. Um, like you said, Kepka um, finishing well, and then of course McElroy uh, missing the cut was a huge, uh, huge win for us. We didn't have to sweat that that head-to-head matchup out. Um, so yeah, I did did real well. I had one disappointing fin- finish. Um, I had Henrik Stenson over uh, Molinari, and he was up by five, six, uh, seven shots. I mean, literally all three rounds. And then on Sunday. You know, this happens every week, but Molinari got the advantage of going out early because he was like, you know, towards the bottom of the field. So before the conditions really started to pick up with wind, he got out early, shot a good five under round. And then Stenson, who was near the near the leaders, ended up going out in the afternoon when conditions deteriorated. And if you look at the final round scores for a lot of these guys in the afternoon, there was nobody under par. Everybody was just backing up. So, of course, Stenson backed up five shots. There was a 10-shot swing between the two guys, and I, and I lost that head-to-head matchup. So, but that's, that's some of the things you can't control sometimes when you're playing uh, or you know, betting on any, any PGA events. Yeah, Never know. No, it's gambling that, that that happens, Nick. But overall, it, it was a good weekend for you. And 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 we got a, another match th- this this upcoming weekend in, in Memphis, Tennessee. Right, it changed from um, Ohio to Memphis. And uh, I, I'm guessing you're interested in getting involved a lot in the, in this week's matchup. Yeah, of course. Um, it's a another big event, World Golf Championship event, which is the next uh, big events behind the majors. And uh, so all the big names are there. Tiger is the only one that's not there. Um, of the big big names but everybody else will be there and um, some things I'm looking at this week um, and more head-to-head matchups this week because I think there's there's some scheduling advantages for guys that um, missed the cut at the open and, and were able to get out of there earlier a couple days earlier than the guys that were fighting till the end on Sunday um, so you know I'm looking at some scheduling advantages on head-to-head matchups sometimes they pick guys you know that were cut versus guys that finished well sometimes they they pick guys that were both cut last week or both finished well so there is there's advantages in some and advantage not advantages in others but that's definitely one factor i'm looking at going into this one yeah so travel spot you know and in any sport you know you got to think of of the spot wise and the travel but golf's an interesting one because I, i'm sure there's a lot of listeners out there you know not necessarily the hardcore golf betters but uh just people kind of uh, of thinking about it and guys that you know didn't play in the british open that are playing in memphis this upcoming weekend i don't think there's a, a big number of those but what about guys that you know missed the cut and they got a couple days you know ahead of the guys playing in the full tournament would you look to bet on those in matchups over the guys that played the full british open yeah, absolutely. I mean, especially this week, like I said, coming from from you know Europe to the states is a big travel, um, and you know some of the guys didn't leave until uh, Monday, and you know they're they're right back to a full full field event come Thursday morning. So it's it's a quick turnaround. It's tough on the guys. You know, you have guys that are younger that may be able to uh, handle a little bit more rigorous schedule versus guys that are a little bit older. Um, Tiger had a had a um, good press conference kind of addressing that about the fact that he's older now and you know some weeks he's just not going to have it and they were even talking about that before the open about like they didn't expect him to do well because when your body's getting older you're you're not playing as well in colder conditions windier conditions uh, uh, rainy conditions like the body just does not hold up and does not perform as well versus in the masters he played well it was hot um it was dry there are conditions that just work better for We'll call them aged bodies than uh, than the younger bodies, but yeah, definitely, uh, definitely think there's a lot of value this week in guys that had a couple extra days days rest going into this tournament. And, and it's interesting to think about Nick and kind of from a blimp's view here of guys that didn't make the cut. 
and having the mindset to just kind of jump on a plane, get back to Memphis and start working on, you know, this upcoming course and preparing your game for it. Whereas opposed to guys maybe, you know, miss the cut, kind of hang out a couple days or, you know, a night and enjoy, go out with the guys and then just kind of work on your game. Are most guys on, that have a PGA Tour ticket kind of the mindset of go every day you know and become a better golfer and do the things needed or do you think there are some guys that are you know in, enjoying life a little bit more and, and golf is important but maybe you know not catch the night next flight out and start scouting the the, the very next day for the next uh, kind of PGA Tour event where would you say uh, you know most guys fall in that spectrum that's a that's a pretty awesome question um I think to answer that, you, you got to look at what time of the season we're at. So right now, you're, we're talking about uh, just a couple events remaining until the playoffs start, and you have guys that need to jockey their positions um, to be able to get into the next tournament. You know, when you, to, to make the playoffs, you got to be in the top uh, 125, and then each each tournament they cut it. So then only the top 70 make the next tournament, and then only the top 30 make the final tournament. So wherever you stand right now, if you're maybe first through 10th you're probably already guaranteed a spot in that that final tournament but if you're you know spot 80 and you're trying to make that cut for 72 and it's you know that tournament's coming up in three weeks every single tournament leading up to that matters you got to get points to to accumulate to that so i would say it's you know somewhere in the 80 20 neighborhood 80 percent are guys trying to get out of there focus on the next tournament especially right now because of where we're at in the season maybe in the beginning of the season it might be a little bit less than that but you also still have guys that are um, what they call weekly grinders on the tour that are l- literally living and, and, and trying to make a, a living paycheck to paycheck. The guys that are happy when they just make a cut, they're, you know, their names you don't hear about week in and week out. They might have a top 10 finish once, twice, three times throughout the season, but they're guys that are literally just trying to make a, make a paycheck by making the cut and then trying to keep their tour card for the next season. So those guys are 100% on the next tournament and, and, and doing that week in and week out. And they have to be, but uh, great question. You know, Kepka, Dustin Johnson, those guys, the money isn't a factor anymore. It's just the prestige of winning. Um, and as, as Kepka will allude to, and a lot of players will allude to the majors are the ones that matter. Uh, that's what your career is measured on at the end of the, at the end of it. So these other events, sometimes you're right. They don't go, they don't go full out anymore. Um, the Lowry who just won just withdrew. He was supposed to be in this event, but they just withdrew. He's been, uh, and rightfully so, the guy's been partying pretty hard and ha- having a great time after that win. But yeah, he's he's definitely put the uh, put the priority behind him as far as this next tournament goes. But again, he's in a situation where he, now with that win, he's kind of guaranteed to move on in the in the playoffs. So great question. I think there's a lot of factors that go in, but um, probably eighty twenty right now. And, and when you say Lowry, you know, withdrew, is that a fact that he was, you know, enjoying himself and out partying, or is he just kind of hanging? Did he say why? Yeah, that is exactly why. Yeah, he's been out um, having a good time, friends, family, staying out. Um, he did not want to get uh, rush on a flight and get out of there and get back to uh, get back to the states. He's, you know, everybody in the country there is just it was a huge win for the home home country and he loved to do it in front of his fans i don't know if he caught on any of his interviews afterwards but yeah he's been en- absolutely 100 percent enjoying his time oh uh, good for him well uh, <laughs> funny to hear that man and, and is kepka playing in this in this event or no he's he is, yeah um he's playing in this event and all of them rory kepka uh dustin johnson all three are in there um almost all the big names so it's going to be a loaded field for the for this week so would you look to fade kepka then um, you know, this one, you know, WGC are probably the only other events besides the majors that, I, you know, I expect him to actually go out there and do well. He's got a really good history on the course that they're playing at, too. Um, so, no, I don't think so. Uh, you know, and he does play a handful of other, like, lesser events. But I think the World Golf Championships, they're, the only players that make these events are the top. Um, this 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 week is the top 69 players by world golf ranking so there's a lot on the line and, and these purses are almost as big as the majors um so i, I think you're going to see him you know come out and play well this week i don't think just this tournament is a reason to fade him there may be other reasons but not not for um not being a major this week all right good stuff and uh we're talking with nick borman here on twitter at borman zero zero getting out giving out a lot of Good free content. Got a free play up at sportsmemo.com. Good general soccer betting info as well. Check out his handicapper page at sportsmemo.com. And we're talking soccer here. And he's got his early bird soccer season package 
up at sportsmemo.com. Discounted, huge discount, just $5.99, plus the fact you can throw in a podcast coupon code of 100 off. That's 100 OFF at checkout, and it will take an extra 100 bucks off. So $5.99 down to $4.99, and you'll get his full season of soccer picks, and that goes for Champions League. MLS, any international games, all, all things soccer, you'll get every soccer play for just under $500 for the full season. Check it out at sportsmemo.com, and that coupon code is 100 off. So let's get into this MLS every game on the board. We'll go at it quick hitter style. We got two games on Friday, the rest on Saturday. KC at New York City FC, minus .75 at home, total of three, Nick. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll see if we can knock these out quick here, Drew. We got twelve games on the on the slate, so busy weekend. Um, Kansas City has been dealing with injury issues all year, and they look like they were slowly starting to come around. They earned their uh, first back to back wins of the year against Chicago and Vancouver, uh, but they lost last weekend zero two at home against Dallas. They have just six wins this season. Um, this is just one year removed from actually winning the Western Conference last year. So it's been a disappointing year for them. New York uh, has steadily moved up the standings after a slow start. They had just one, uh, excuse me, no wins, one loss, and five draws in their first six games. So they just couldn't get a win. Uh, but they've been winning steadily late. Um, they won at Colorado last weekend, which is always a tough place to play. Um, Colorado had a guy sent off in that game. So um, they ended up playing against 10 guys. But still, a win is a win. Um, I just don't see much chance here that Kansas City comes into New York and plays well enough to earn a point. I think uh, New York City's probably going to win this one rather easily. Um, you can get them on the three-way line um, at around minus 125, minus 130, um, instead of laying the three-quarter goal line, because I, I do see a possibility of a one-goal win. So I like them on the three-way line at around minus 125, minus 130 in this one, Drew. All right. The the next game on Friday, only two of them, Atlanta at Los Angeles FC, looks like uh, LAFC minus one or minus 1.25, total of 3.25, Nick. Yeah, this one's tough. Uh, unless a line moves here, I recommend a pass really on this one. Um, LA at home has just been a force all year, and Atlanta, they've been playing well as of late. Um, they moved up to second place in the East, but I think they're going to struggle in LA. Um, I think they could keep the game within a goal, but you know, catching them at that plus 1.25 just really isn't worth a bet because, you know, you're only going to win half your wager at that number. So I think the total is really right on the money, too. Atlanta has been an under team all year. L.A. has been an over team. Um, and I think Atlanta is going to really try to keep the place pace slow enough um, for this game to stay close and for them to have a chance. But that being said, LAFC can go off at any time and they're a hard team to really contain. So I think the numbers are right on the money here. I don't see a ton of value. I'm going to pass on this one. All right, on to Saturday's slate. We got Orlando at New England. New England minus a goal at home. Total of three, Nick. I like the I like the Lions here. That's Orlando. I like them catching a full goal. Um, New England has been playing very well. Uh, Bruce Arena uh, coming on board for them has continued his unbeaten run. Uh, they've gotten now nine unbeaten games since he came on board with um, four, and they won four of their last five. Um, they are playing an easy part of the schedule right now. They beat Colorado, Vancouver, and Cincy. So the jury's really still out on these guys when they come up against a good team. But luckily, Orlando's not quite one of those good teams yet. Um, the Lions, they did beat Columbus uh, and earned a solid point at Portland. But they did lose uh, last week against the Red Bulls. They were missing one of their better players, Dom Dwyer, who had a red card the game before. So they'll be glad to have him back. Um, and Orlando's kind of been like New England. They both started this year slow and have been playing better as of late. And I just don't see a full goal here. Um, New England probably should be favored by a half goal, maybe three quarters of a goal. But I think the value is on Orlando here catching the full goal. I, I think they can keep it within that. Maybe at worst we're looking at a push here if, if New England wins by just that one goal margin. But I like Orlando to, to keep this one close, Drew. Good stuff, Nick. We got Columbus at New York. Red Bulls up next. Red Bulls minus three quarters goal. Total at two point seven five. Yeah, Columbus. Uh, they're not good, uh, but they finally earned their first win in eight matches um, last week. They beat Montreal two to one at home. Uh, not sure if they would have won though if Montreal didn't receive uh, an early second half red card. But uh, on the road, Columbus has just earned just four points this year. They have one win one draw and eight losses so they've been really 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 bad um they won their very first road game of the year 
then proceeded to lose eight straight, um, but then did draw two to two at Chicago, who's also having a terrible season uh, in their last game. The Red Bulls are a borderline contender in the East um, this year, as long as they can hang on to Aaron Long, who, um, if you read any news going on in the MLS right now, there's a ton of European clubs uh, trying to uh, trying to take Aaron Long for the Red Bulls and transfer him before the window closes. He's the 2018 Defensive Player of the Year. Um, so he's a huge part of that team and what they're able to do. So luckily for them right now, uh, they still have him. And with him on the field, you know, they're they're tough to, to beat on the back line. So I don't think Columbus is going to have many chances really in this game. And I don't see really any chance that they have to go in this. So even at uh, the three-quarter goal line, I think New York could win this one 2-0 or 3-0 pretty easily. So I like the Red Bulls here, Drew. Okay, we got another three-quarter goal one here with Chicago at home laying that two D.C. United total of three. Chicago stinks just mentioned it um, them laying this number I think is uh, is too much I think DC is the way to play this one uh, Ch- Chicago they have one win in their last 12 games so I just you know I don't see why they're laying this typical number or this type of number DC hasn't been playing great lately um, and they've, they've fallen from second place to third place um, with with losing last week as Atlanta took them over. Um, but I think they're a better team. They're deeper. Uh, Wayne Rooney didn't play uh, this past past weekend um, as he was being rested, as it was a busy part of the schedule. So he's back, and they'll be back at full strength. Um, Chicago at home is better, of course, than they are on the road, but I don't think they should be favored by this number. So I think D.C. catching the three-quarter number is a way to play this one. They did play earlier this year. The game ended in a 3-3 draw. Um, so I'm expecting another close one here. I like, I like uh, D.C. here, Drew. And Nick, as we're breaking down these MLS games, uh, just last night we had uh, the LA Galaxy playing uh, the team from Tijuana, and it was, you know, kind of USA versus Mexico, got a lot of uh, attention in the mainstream media. And and it's interesting to see, you know, a game like that kind of coincide with the MLS season. You know, a lot of American betters out there, people listening to the podcast, probably aren't used to that. You know, an MLB team doesn't really play a Mexican team team in the middle of the season how, how does that kind of relate to, to to the betting world in this MLS this weekend does it hurt these teams to, does it help them in some way um, do you factor it in a lot into your handicapping awesome question um, yeah you're right no, no there's not many other sports or any sports really that that do these um, you know have multiple leagues we'll say or multiple competitions going on at one time and you see it in Europe too there's you know domestic cup matches meaning like england um has their own tournaments going on while the premier league is going on they have other competitions going on and then you have like the champions league and europa league going on at the same time and and this you mentioned the league's cup um which was last night's the first time that we're doing this um, usa versus mexico uh league's cup and it should get better as years goes go on but right now um there's only eight teams involved and the schedule is kind of a factor here you're 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 putting this competition in right as the MLS is gearing up for playoff runs and um, what we saw last night and I think what we're going to see from all the MLS teams going forward is they just don't care this year Um, LA uh, Galaxy they actually ended up winning on penalties last night and Chicago both teams played a heavily rotated starting 11 so they didn't have a lot of their big names in at all in the game or maybe they came in as a sub in the last you know 20 minutes or so just to get um a couple minutes on but they're not taking these seriously they don't mean anything they're for bragging rights of course but they really mean nothing right now these these both of these teams um last night are are trying for every point they possibly can get in the mls so to try to win that game last night and, and you know have somebody get injured or just even fatigue having guys play um, two three nights um, in a week is is too much so you'll see a lot of that i think this year there's not a lot of interest right now from the mls in this tournament if they do uh do a better job with the scheduling next year and have it at a different time we may see them try a little bit more um so for the average better out there um if you're looking to bet these league cup games i would uh i would wait until lineups are announced you know which is usually about 45 minutes uh, before the game time starts, uh, but I think you're going to see a lot of secondary lineups right now for the MLS versus Mexico. They actually had um, pretty decent lineups in there. They're only on their very, very first week of the season, so these guys are rested. They're you know they're not going for 
Um, they're not as heavily invested in the seasons yet. So I think you're going to see probably Mexico win most of these games um, rather easily this year. Yeah, I, I bet on Tijuana with that kind of in mind, and I, I, they ended up losing um, in, in penalty kicks. Right? That's how it yeah. finished, right? It was pretty good last <laughs> night. Yeah, exactly. But uh, you listen, uh, you lost, but you were on the right side. If you look at the numbers in that game and the way that game was played, Tijuana was the better team. They just, you know, it's soccer. Sometimes uh, all you need is one lucky break or bounce, and, and a goal can go the wrong way. But I think you were on the right side in that one. All right, Nick, good stuff. We got Real Salt Lake at Dallas up next. Dallas uh, .75 home favorites, total of 2.75. Yeah, I don't have much on this one, Drew. Uh, There's really not many season trends or or data that really suggest a play either way. I think the numbers are right on the money here. Um, The only thing I can say here is that history, if you look at the history between these teams, um, there's been 19 visits to Dallas that Salt Lake has made, and they've won just one time, uh, and they have just three draws. So that means Dallas has 15 wins. So that's a pretty big, uh, pretty big historical advantage there. They just struggle when they when they go to Dallas. But this year, the teams look very evenly matched. There's not a lot of uh, value, I think, in the line. So if you need any action in this game, maybe take Dallas based on just the fact that Salt Lake does not travel well there. Otherwise, I think keep keep your money in the pocket on this one, and and we'll try to make it on some other games this weekend. Okay, another West Coast team traveling to the state of Texas. We got Seattle at Houston. Houston minus a half a goal at home. Total at two point seven five. Yeah, I'm looking at the uh, the over in this one. Um, Houston had a great win last week, 3-1 at Toronto, which was much needed for them. They had just one win and six losses in their previous seven matches, so they were on a, a pretty bad slide. Um, Toronto, they chose to rest much of their starting 11, um, which we have seen a lot of teams do the last few weeks. As we just mentioned, it's been a very, very busy schedule for them. They've had a lot of – MLS in general has had a lot of midweek games and weekend games. But um, – so now, now we're getting to a point where it's really geared back towards just the weekend. So we'll we'll see a lot of teams back to uh, to full strength as they start going forward. Um, Houston at home this year has been very very solid. Um, Seattle they really haven't been playing on uh, the, their best on the road lately, um, and both teams have been scoring and conceding lately. So I'm going to ride with the over. I think uh, I think that's a way to play this one. Houston's got. Um, the over has hit the over, excuse me, in six straight matches and four straight at home. And Seattle has finished over in eight of their last nine and five straight on the road. So I think we're going to see some goals in this one, Drew. We got the early bird soccer season package now just five ninety nine at sportsmemo.com. And with the coupon code 100 off, that's 100 OFF at checkout. It takes an extra hundred dollars off. So for under 500 bucks, you can get full season soccer package with Nick Borman get all of his selections for just 4.99 using the coupon code 100 off at checkout he's been great in soccer lifetime soccer best bets four and five stars 157 and 132 54 percent also 191 and 156 that's 55 percent on total so uh good numbers there over the long term for nick borman knows the soccer betting markets and you can jump on for less than 500 bucks full soccer season using the coupon code 100 off at checkout vancouver at minnesota up next minnesota heavy home favorites here minus 1.25 total of three nick yeah vancouver just in an absolute free fall right now they've they've fallen to dead last in espn's power rankings they've lost five straight games by a combined score of two to 17 um i was watching their last game against san jose and they looked like they, they honestly looked like a team that just didn't belong um granted san jose has been playing as good as anybody right now but still um the results for vancouver have not been any, any different in their last five uh, Minnesota, meanwhile, has been on a on a tear. Um, they did have their seven game winning streak come to an end with a one one draw at Salt Lake last weekend, but drawing at Salt Lake is really never a bad result. Um, they've won five straight home games and have scored at least three goals uh, themselves in four of those games. I'm, I'm tempted to take the over here, but with Vancouver really struggling to find the net, I, I think it makes more sense to back Minnesota here. I see them winning two zero three zero rather easily, so. This will be one I'll, I'll lay the big number on with Minnesota at home here, Drew. Nick, we got Philadelphia at Montreal up next, and I'm guessing that Montreal isn't very good because this is the only home team that isn't the favorite. We got a pick em price right here, total of 2.75. Yeah, another Canadian team um, struggling. Uh, Montreal's last lost four straight games. Uh, they fall into sixth in the East. So they're they're if you look at their underlying numbers and comparing it to their place in the standings, 
they're one of those teams that just didn't make sense. Somehow, they were kind of hanging on to second, third um, place, and even fourth place in the standings pretty much the majority of the season. But their their goal differential um, is at minus 11 versus uh, New York City, for example, who's now number five in the standings. They have a plus 10 goal differential. So it really was only a matter of time before that started to catch up to them. If you're if you're conceding and not scoring on obviously any sport, you're, you're, you're kind of a pretender in that situation. Um, so I'm not surprised to see this happening with, with Montreal. Um, Philly, on the other hand, they've held the top spot in the East since May. Um, and really only Atlanta is the other team in the East, I think, that could take that top spot from them. They're solid across all positions. Um, but they just lack that one star in their lineup. Um, Marco Fabian is the guy that could be could be that guy. Um, he scored an absolute rocket against Chicago last weekend. Um, he has missed eight games this year due to injury, but he's back in the lineup now, um, and they look tough to beat. I watched that game uh, all all that game last week, and they looked really really solid against Chicago. So I think Philly at a pick and price is the only way to play this one, Drew. I think fade Montreal here. All right, Nick, we got Cincinnati at Toronto up next. Another Canadian team here, but this one laying minus 1.5, total of 3.25, Nick. Yeah, this one's quick. Uh, Cincy sucks (laughs) and have conceded more goals than any other team in the league by a large margin. They've conceded 51 goals through 22 games already. Um, And Toronto is one of the higher scoring teams in the league, and they also concede. So I see many goals coming this match. Um, I think this total is going to rise to at least three and a half um, by game time, maybe higher. So I would jump on the total here and the over on this one now at 3.25. But I think that's the only one to play this one. I think we're going to see a pretty high scoring one here, Drew. All right, Nick. We got Colorado at San Jose. San Jose minus one point two five home favorites. Total of three point two five. San Jose. Uh, they, they honestly look like the best team in the league right now. They've they've taken over thirty shots in each of their last two games, which is a remarkable number in, in soccer. Um, in their last seven games, they have taken at least twenty shots in all but one game, and they now trail only LAFC in both total goal attempts and shots on goal per game. So offensively, they're just clicking. Um, at home, they have not lost since March, um, winning eight games in one draw, and they've covered this number five times. Uh, Colorado has been playing pretty well, too, uh, even though the results haven't really shown that in their last few games. But I think they're going to be overmatched in this one by an even hotter team in San Jose. Uh, big number here at minus one and a quarter, um, and I think this one probably rises to minus one and a half, so um, I would jump on it now. But I think I think the Quakes can cover this one. Um, I think at worst it's a one goal win for for San Jose, which would be just a half loss on the wager. So important to grab this number now before it moves to one and a half. So San Jose here, Drew. All right, and last game up, we got the LA Galaxy, the team that just played the Tijuana game, the game we spoke about earlier at Portland, minus one total of three point two five, Nick. Yeah, no, uh, no Zlatan in that game last night. I don't know if you uh, were watching the game at all. Yeah, no, uh, I watched it. Sure. Yep. So no, no Zlatan. Did you catch? Uh, did you catch the game against LAFC last weekend? And maybe uh, maybe you caught some headlines at least about that game. Yeah, but but I mean, just in in last night's game, just against Tijuana. Like I bet on Tijuana. It was a good game. I felt like Tijuana, um, you, you know, was pressing them. Had definitely like more possession time <laughs> against LA, but uh, for whatever reason, couldn't couldn't finish it off. But no, no. What, what were you getting at in the week before? Oh, just just the you know Zlatan and what the guy does on the biggest of stages. I mean, versus LAFC, they call it the El Trafico. It's the rivalry of the two LA, two LA teams, um, okay. one of the biggest rivalries in the in the league. And LAFC is definitely the better team uh, this year. But Zlatan, you know, everybody was just saying, uh, you know, Carlos Vela, who's LAFC star, is is the MVP this year. He's he's better than Zlatan, and Zlatan is just he's a very brash, <laughs> abrasive kind of a guy. Uh, very cocky, but he backs it up. So he scored a hat trick in that game against LAFC, single handedly won the game. Um, and then, you know, asked after the game, like, you know, you know, are, are you still the best? Cause he, before the game, he said he's the best player in the league. And he, and he laughed at the interview afterwards. Um, he's like, how, how old's Carlos Vela? And, and the, you know, they're like, oh, he's 29 years old. He's like, yeah. And where was I at 29 years old? And like, yeah, you were playing in, you know, the Premier League. He's like, yeah, that's the big difference. The guy's in his prime. And he's playing in the MLS. <laughs> so he's just he's just that kind of a guy. But um, anytime he's on the field, uh, the Galaxy are definitely a dangerous team. But I think you're going to see possibly a letdown here. Um, for them in this game just because of the fact that there was so much attention brought on that game against uh, LAFC. 
Um, and Portland, they've really been playing well. Um, and really what's been doing it for them is their defense. Um, and I think this is going to be a hard fought, close game. Uh, Portland has finished under this total in six of their last seven games. And I think they're going to, I'm going to uh, see them control the pace of this game. So Zlatan, like I said, he's the, the shining star in LA and really if, they go as he goes. So if they can control his time, which I think they will in this, this one, I don't see a galaxy doing much here. So I'm liking the under here. I wouldn't be surprised just to see Portland win this thing one Oh. Um, so I really like the under in this one, Drew. All right, guys. And check out the early bird soccer season package, five ninety nine coupon code, 100 off to make it four ninety nine. get all of Nick's soccer picks. Nick, great job. As always, anything else you want to throw out before we shut this down? Uh, just looking forward to uh, the Premier League, the uh, Bundesliga, all the European leagues are starting. Uh, the Premier League starts August 9th, um, so two and a half weeks. So really, really looking forward to that. Um, next week we'll uh, we'll preview that. We'll go over, um, you know, there's three new teams in the league this year coming up from, uh, from the championship division below as there's promotion and relegation every year. So we'll talk about the new teams coming in, who's got a chance, and of course – who's going to probably come away with the title this year. So yeah, just really looking forward to uh, the next couple of weeks as we're kind of in that, you know, preseason for these teams. And there's not a lot of action out there right now besides major league soccer. So just kind of in a little bit of a lull and, and, and kind of ties right into uh, football as I know you're doing the same thing, getting ready for uh, for football season coming up in a couple of weeks as well. Absolutely. And uh, we'll be back on Friday talking college football with Robbie Vino. So guys stay tuned and best of luck with your bets. We'll talk on Friday. <laughs>